Good afternoon. Well, first of all, it's uh, good to be back. Uh, like for most of us, it has been a couple of years. Um, so it has been quite some time since I talked for such a large audience. Luckily, we have started traveling like most of you uh, a couple of months back. But in summary, it's good, uh, it's good to be here. So as you can see, my name is Johan Witters. I'm doing business development for our SD1 solution, and I'm part of the Nuage Networks team within, within Nokia. The uh, title of my presentation is Digital Transformation in Action, and I will try to bring it uh, down to earth with uh, providing a number of use cases from some of the service provider partners that are in, in the audience today. Okay, um, as it has been a while since we met and, and discussed, I thought for some of you this is new, for others it's a recap. I just wanted to spend like one minute on who is Nokia, who is Nuage, and what is the relationship, okay? So first of all, the tagline of uh, Nokia is together with our customers, we create the world's networks, which is kind of pretty important, especially if you think to, uh, on COVID, for example. Uh, the, the telecoms infrastructure was, was and is considered uh, a critical uh, infrastructure. Nokia is organized in four uh, business divisions, network infrastructure, mobile, cloud and networks, and technologies where the patents, for example, are. Within that network infrastructure uh, group, you have again four teams, um, optical, IP, submarine, and fixed access. And within the IP networks, you have again four groups, and there you see SD1, and that's branded as Nuage Networks from Nokia. So you can see where we got our background from, which is from the mother company, which is basically from the division doing the networking, doing the routing, and that is actually still one of the differentiators in, in our product, uh, which I will discuss in a moment. So when Nuage Networks was founded 10 years ago, there were three pillars, and there are st still three pillars. One is the, the VPNs, network virtualization, which we bring to the table. The second one, obviously, is everything related to IP routing. And then there is uh, end policy-based uh, attachment. And these formed the SDN part of uh, the Nokia Nuage solution. OK, we heard already quite a bit on digital transformation. I'm just going to do a slightly different spin on it. Uh, we all have examples by now from enterprises who went into the digital transformation, and in doing that, they became usually uh, successful. So um, it's, it's definitely a thing to do. Now, what are some of the drivers to, to go there? We can break it up into, let's say, five parts. The first one is product manufacturing. So in product ma manufacturing, um, we used to have, like say, the waterfall method, um, and people are trying to speed up, come to the market uh, faster and quicker with, with products. Of course, there is the improvement on collaboration, and working from home does, does play also an important role in, in there. Then there is a the whole distribution, which is pretty important, especially in the times with lack of components. So that needs to be addressed, and that is a business driver for digital transformation as well. And then there is the streamlining of uh, business processes and custom information, and in both of these uh, two, AI and ML uh, do play a role. So that's from a business uh, driver perspective behind digital transformation. Now you might be wondering, well, what does that bring to me in, uh, on an SD1 front? Well, you might have seen this slide already in Sarab's keynote uh, this morning. Actually, this is a, an MRT uh, study from uh, this year. And if you uh, compare traffic that stays within the wide area network, two years ago it was 40%, now it's 26%. So you see a big decline in traffic that stays within the wide area network. And of course, that automatically means that there's much more traffic that leaves or hardly touches the wide area network. So if this is the case, shouldn't we rethink the one and do something about it? Okay? So I will come to that in a minute. Before I go there, I want to bring one more analyst to the table. This is IDC. 
And again, as you can see, it's pretty recent from, uh, uh, from September this year. And actually, what, what IDC is saying is that SD1 plays a key role in enterprise agility. And the future of the connectivity is one of the key drivers behind that enterprise agility. And IDC has broken it up again into four segments, business agility, operational agility, customer agility, and value chain agility. And each of these elements are again broken down in a couple of sub-bullets. Um, without going and read the, the full slides, so this is, this is a slide from IDC. What I did next is I looked at this and I, I was looking at where does SD1 play a role in each of these elements? Okay, and this is my interpretation, so that is by definition subjective, and it can be open for debate, but it's clear that SD1 plays a role in many of these areas, okay? So to summarize, SD1, agility, digital enterprise, change in the wide area network. And when we bring this all together, we come to a slide that was also presented this morning by Sorab, where we used to have, and still have in a large number of cases, where we used to have a wide area network connecting sites, branches, and headquarters, and we typically were drawing a cloud somewhere in the middle, which connected all these things. What we are now seeing is that, obviously, we still have those branches, we still have uh, the headquarters, but we also start to see mobile devices, IoT devices, and obviously working from home since a couple of years, much more uh, present there. At the same time, the cloud is now really at the heart of it. So you have public cloud, you have private cloud, and then you have the connectivity. And that's not only internet, that's also MPLS, well, basically uh, every, every underlay fixed, fixed and mobile. So what we are saying is that actually for SD1, you need what we refer to as a universal network fabric. And actually that's that great grayed out area that you see here on, on this slide. And let me come to some deployment examples to make it a bit more uh, concrete. Now, one thing that I did not mention yet is from a Nokia Nuage perspective, we work predominantly with partners and sell to service providers. So we hardly go direct to, to enterprises. So the use cases that I'm going to show, and I'm going to show you five use cases, they are from our service provider partners, okay? So the first one is uh, a US-based healthcare company, and you can read all the stats for yourself. I think it's important to point out that it's a rather big enterprise, right? 40 hospitals. Uh, more than uh, 100,000 connected uh, devices. Um, so it, it's pretty large. Now, when they started with SD1 a number of years ago, it was more the quote-unquote traditional SD1 environment where you connect the doctor's offices the, and the hospitals to public and private cloud. What they did next in the next phase of the rollout is referring to the 200 SD1 homes which, which are indicated, and what does that mean? The hospital, and um, most likely every hospital, has a radiology department where you have CT scans, uh, MRI, and, and all that kind of, and x-rays, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and those photos are taken from patients, and there's a guy in control of taking the pictures. What that hospital or healthcare group has decided a number of years ago, this is actually uh, pre-COVID, was to give the specialists, the radiologists, the uh, possibility to work from home. And that had a number of advantages. For example, first of all, the radiologist does not need to be in the same place where the patient is. So he can work with patients in the same hospital or in different hospitals, at, uh, not at the same time, but consequently, so that he can do uh, more and, and does not need to be there at, at location. Obviously, uh, high bandwidth is required for those uh, kind of applications, as well as a secure connectivity, and all managed from a, let's say, from a central uh, management uh, system. So this is, yeah, a pretty interesting uh, use case in the healthcare sector. 
The second uh, use case is also um, a specific one, I, I would say. So basically, this is a, a, a South Asian country where a number of months ago there was a, a national election, both for the parliament as well as for the president. And in order to bring that up, I, like in many countries, where do you, do you go to vote? These are typically school buildings or community buildings or public buildings. So the network or the solution has to be built in one or two days prior to the voting and then has to be teared down the next day. So that is the harsh environment that the solution needed to be uh, build, build up. And obviously, uh, SD1 was, was the technology uh, chosen to bring this, this kind of network uh, to life. So on the one hand, you have the, the voters, you have the voting locations, you have the, the count machines. Uh, and from those count, count machines throughout the country, there were like 30,000, which were connected to 440 um, SD1 sites. Uh, most, if not all, had dual uplinks affixed and a mobile, as yeah, you want to be able to do that election uh, flawless. So that, that was, from a redundancy perspective, pretty, pretty important. So quite a different use case from the previous one. The, the, um, the third use case is um, in the banking, but then much more in the infrastructure side of the house. Um, and it's, uh, it's in a, based in a European country. So, what happens throughout the world, the importance of cash goes down uh, rapidly. Now, in a lot of countries, they have a number of banks with national coverage. I, I said on the top of the slide, number of national banks, but actually that should be interpreted as a number of banks with national uh, coverage. And each of these banks has their own ATM network. What in that country happened is those banks came together and they formed a new company and that new company had as the sole task to create a new, completely new and independent ATM network. Okay? Um, and they, uh, they sat down with the government and they agreed upon what is an average distance needed between people and the ATM, the closest ATM. And then they came to uh, a number like well over 2,000 number of, uh, of ATM uh, machines that they needed to deploy. Deployment is still, still ongoing. And when everything is deployed, obviously, those different bank ATMs can all be dismantled, and then you have a new common network of, of ATMs. Again, um, the, the security, um, the encryption uh, were some, some of, the, of the goodies, and as benefits, some, some real estate is freed up for these different banks, and everything is brought to the new network. So that's a third use case. A fourth uh, use case stays in the same area, but is, is pretty much different. Actually, it is, um, again, a, a finance institution in a European country. Um, and they were looking to modernize their uh, wide area network. And at the same time, they wanted to get rid of um, quite a large number of low speed expensive links. And they wanted to replace it with, um, let's say, uh, more affordable uh, bandwidth, basically. So they, uh, they moved to, uh, to SD1. And actually, in terms of bandwidth, they have now four times more bandwidth, roughly, for the same, for the same uh, price, basically. What was important for this use case is that they wanted to have interworking between, on the one hand, SD1, and on the other hand, IPVPNs, as well as MPLS in, in the underlay. And for that, uh, you have our border router or underlay border router functionality, which is a specific software function that we have in Nokia uh, Nuage solution. The other thing that they could do, because they have more bandwidth, is they, they can, could bring their CCTV network to SD1 before it were separate networks. One additional advantage that they um, learned later on, basically, that I experienced later on was when they bought uh, another bank, they could pretty seamlessly add the two networks together, leave them as is to start with, and then migrate from one to, to another. 
So basically, that's a use case number uh, four. And the last use case that I want to share with you is uh, a consumer's goods manufacturer or with, a, with, a global, uh, with a global presence. So they were looking also for their uh, one uh, modernization. Uh, and that was driven to a large extent by they wanted to move to, um, to ERP and to other SaaS-based uh, applications. Um, that was one. The other um, thing that they wanted is they wanted to have a pretty agile IT infrastructure because I said it's a consumer's good company throughout the world. So they want to be rather rapidly in changing when there is somewhere an opportunity that comes or that goes away. So they wanted to have a pretty agile uh, infrastructure. Uh, also encryption and the move to Microsoft Office uh, were some of the elements that, that were pretty, pretty important. Um, the other thing that's not on the slide but that was also pretty important, they were keening on getting the managed firewall services from the service provider that they were working with. So again, um, as well as what you see here, the, uh, the, the solution from Zscaler. So basically in the use cases that I just uh, touched upon, you see a combination of what we call that universal network fabric with other elements, including best of breed uh, security. You have a very easy job today. When you show the five minute sign, I'm on my last slide like the previous one, so. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So uh, in conclusion, so the digital transformation uh, has changed the wide area network and is still changing the wide area network. We tried to show it with some recent, let's say, analyst information. And that has led me to conclude that there is a need for a universal network fabric, um, which has built-in security, but can be easily complemented by best of breed uh, security. And we have, uh, let's say, deployments where we work with Zscaler, uh, with Checkpoint, with Palo Alto, and, and so on. So these are all, uh, let's say, um, uh, deployments which, which are uh, uh, ongoing or which have been deployed. And I've tried to show that by using uh, several use cases. Thank you for your time.